Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I want to demonstrate how you can map vault properties to Inventor's I properties. In my scenario, I want to create two mappings, one to a custom I property called stock location, which is where this object is stored in our warehouse. And I want to track that both in Inventor and Vault and kind of link up those properties. The other one is I want to kind of have some sort of record of who actually created this file or who originally checked this in the Vault. So there is a system property that tracks that. And I'll be able to create a one-way mapping from Vault into Inventor for that. So the first part of that process is I need to make sure that I have those properties in Vault, which I've done that already. The second part is to make sure I have the right properties here in Inventor to receive those values or to begin creating that link to. So I'm going to go here into my I properties for this file. I'm going to create a custom I property called stock location. And I'll set some sort of value. I'll add that one and then I'll create one called model. Actually, let's not do a model. Let's just call this originator. And again here, I'm not going to put a value in there. I'm going to have vault publish that the system property that I'm going to link into is again, it's a system property, which I cannot modify vault keeps track of that. I can only push that into my CAD file. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, here, I'm going to save this. So now I'm going to flip over to Vault. Now here in Vault, I'm going to go up to Tools, Administration, Vault Settings, Behaviors, Properties. I do want to point out to be able to map properties, you have to be a Vault user that has an administrator role. Any average CAD user that just has a document editor role will not be able to do this. So I'm going to find my stock location that I've created previously. I'm going to go and say edit. I'll go to my mapping tab. You see there's no mapping yet. If I click in this provider cell, you'll see it begins creating a mapping and I have to fill out these, these these properties or these criteria. So provider, I'm going to say inventor. Notice that there is one for IPT, IAM, IDW, IPN, IDE, and there's also a separate one for inventor DWG. So just be aware of that. So file property, you can see I don't have anything listed here. I have to get a list from a file, whether that is one in vault or one on my local C drive or one on my network. So I'm going to come down here to import properties. I'm going to say from file. You notice, so basically it's from vault or from file. So basically from file will let me browse my network. From vault is going to let me browse vault. So I'll say import from file. I'm going to browse to where that actuator block file was saved on my C drive. And you'll see that it lists a bunch of properties here from that file. You'll see that there's a standard classification. The one I'm going to look for is technically a custom property. So there's stock location, the custom property. I'll say OK. And you see it's a text type. It's a custom classification. The two things here I want to point out is the mapping. You can notice I can say I want the file to write to vault. I want vault to write to the file, or I want to create a bi-directional mapping. I want to create a bi-directional mapping in this case. The last one is create. What create is, if I set this to yes, it will create this property on all the files in the vault, whether it has it or not. If I say no, it won't create it, um, and then the mapping won't take place if the file doesn't have this property. I'm going to set this to yes. I typically set mine to yes. These last two are really kind of dependent upon what you're trying to do. Your scenario might be different than mine, 
So you might want to do something a little bit different. If I just kind of click out here in this outside of that row, you can see it gets added below here and it becomes part of my mapping. One other thing to point out here is I could create multiple different mappings, maybe one for AutoCAD, maybe there's a different property that would have some sort of role here and I can actually prioritize them. Uh, Vault will start at the top of the list and work their way down. And I have these arrowheads here that will allow me to move them up and move them down. One quick note while we're right here is that you have to be careful when creating multiples. I've actually had two or three support calls over the last couple months from people that were getting weird behavior. They weren't getting their desired result from their mapping. And after digging into the issue with them, we've discovered they had cyclical or conflicting mappings. And we kind of cleared out some of those conflicting mappings, kind of got back to one and everything started working okay. So just be careful when you're creating multiples that you're not going to create some sort of conflicting mapping or some sort of cyclical mapping, which might create an issue for you. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, you can see here it might want to run a property index. So basically what a property index, you have to run this from the server. And that what that would do is if there's files in the vault that already have this custom property, it would start circling or cycling through all the files that are already in the vault and actually extracting that information to start populating that stock number, I'm sorry, stock location field in the files that are in the vault. If you um, do this before the re-index or, or if you do this without the re-index, as files are checked back in, the mapping would be carried out. So I'll go ahead and say, okay, say close here. And I forgot to create my other mapping. So let me go right back in. So the field I'm looking for is called originator. I'm gonna go ahead and say edit the mapping, just like before. I'm gonna say inventor. from file, there's my actuator. There's my originator, say okay. Custom, again, mapping here. Notice I can't change it because this is a system property. The vault has to edit it and then that has to be pushed in the CAD file. And I'll actually change this one here to say yes as well. Say okay, say close say close. So now let's go back to that file, check it out and see what happens. So here I am back in Inventor. I've got my actuator block. If I look at my properties again, I've got something in my stock number. Originator doesn't have any information in it. I'm going to get logged into the vault. Already logged in. Perfect. So now I'm going to check this file in. So I'm back in Vault. I'm gonna go ahead and do a refresh. And I'm gonna to go to my actuator assembly folder. There's the actuator block file we were working on. And if I scroll down here, you'll notice there's my stock location. It's mapped, it's pulled in that K102 value. You might be looking for your originator here, but let's think about that for a second. That originator was a custom property on the CAD file. We were pushing the originator, which again is a system defined property. And you can see here I've got user defined, and I've got system defined. There's originator, you can see it's got the administrator who is the vault user I'm logged in as now and who checked that file in. So I'm going to go back over to Inventor. I'm going to do an open from vault on that actuator. Not checked out. Do you want to check it out now? Yes. Do you want to update the properties? Yes. Let's look at my I properties. So you see there's originator. It's set to administrator. Again, that is the 
vault user I was logged in as when this file was checked in. Stock location is still the same value. We haven't changed that. So there you go. That's uh, pretty straightforward. Hopefully this is something you can utilize as you move forward and help you kind of keep track of information both in Inventor and in Vault and try to keep those things synced up so you don't have any confusion down the road. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. I hope you found the information useful that you can apply to your normal workflows. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.